The next question I'd like us to answer is this. When does conception begin? Conception begins by faith. Meaning, when the word of God concerning conception is known, that is when conception begins. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And anyone that comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. How then can we make our conception journey pleasing unto the Lord? We can do so by faith, receiving a word from him about the situation. Always remember that your conception journey is a faith walk, meaning the word of God concerning that journey can and should be made known even before the journey begins. When it comes to conceiving ideas, the ideas that make impact are those that are conceived from the Spirit. You know, there are many ideas out there, but not all ideas have the same value and create the same impact. So together, let's take a look at four accounts in Scripture of people whose conception journey began after receiving a word. We'll begin by looking at the account of Elizabeth prior to, the, to conceiving John. I'll read this to you from Luke chapter 1, verse 11 to 13, from the New International Version. It says this, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, talking about Zachariah, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zachariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zachariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. Amen. The next account is that of Mary prior to conceiving Jesus. And we see this in Luke chapter 1, verse 30 to 31. As I read this to you from the New International Version, it says this, But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will receive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. Amen. The third account is that of Sarah prior to conceiving Isaac. Genesis 18 verse 10 and verse 14, the word of God tells us this. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. And verse 14 says, Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year. And Sarah will have a son. Amen. The last account I would like us to take a look at is that of Manoah's wife prior to conceiving Samson. And this is found in Judges chapter 13, verse 2 to 3. And I'll read this to you from the New International Version. It says this, A certain man of Zorah named Manoah from the clan of the Danites had a wife who was childless, unable to give birth. The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth. To a son. Amen. Now, when you look very closely at these individuals, you realize that the word of God that came to them was not based on any effort of theirs. In fact, Elizabeth, Sarah, and Manoah's wife, we are clearly told that were unable to conceive. However, when the word of the Lord came to them, faith came and the conception journey began. Now, now that we have known that the word of God is very, very necessary when it comes to our conception journey, we do not have to wait until we get to a place where the enemy attacks us to a place where we are unable to conceive, then we start desiring to have a word. So do not wait until you get to that place. Begin your journey now. Start inquiring from the Lord how this journey should begin and what his mind is concerning your generation. Amen. And when the word of the Lord comes to you as concerns your journey, that, that word becomes a shield of faith for you when the enemy attempts to attack you. Amen.